Committee A, which will be held as hybrid meeting. The meeting is now being recorded and will be placed on the Council's website as soon as is practical following its conclusion. Participants will be accessing the meeting from Council Chamber or from remote locations. Please could everybody ensure that mobile phones are switched off or onto silent mode. Members will have received an electronic copy of the agenda. I will ask officers to present a summary of the key points. For the record, the agenda can be viewed on the Council's website. Members and officers will be speaking at various points during the meeting, but I would ask that with the exception of myself as chairperson, members and officers keep their cameras and microphones switched off until they are summoned to speak as this will help to minimise any background noise and interference and to ensure the connection remains as stable as possible. If any members and officers wish to raise a point or question, they should press the hands up icon on the screen hand at the top of the right hand side of the Microsoft Teams window and I will come to you in the order I receive requests. Please lower your hand once you've finished speaking. The chat button has been disabled for this meeting. Please do not use your microphone until I invite you to do so. Officers from Democratic Services will be supporting this meeting and will be monitoring the use of microphones throughout its duration and, where necessary, will mute those not being used. I would also ask the officers to introduce themselves as, when, as and when I invite them to speak during the course of the meeting. They too should ensure microphones and cameras are switched off when not in use. I will now proceed to the agenda business. Right. Um, agenda item one, apologies for absence. Are there... Sorry, uh, yes, Michael. Thanks, Chair. Um, I've received apologies from Councillor Phil Jenkins. Thank you. Um, item two, declarations of interest. And I've got one from um, Ian, Councillor Ian Williams. Um, Councillor Bletso. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, just going back to the apologies for absence, I do apologise. I missed the opportunity to register this. I need to leave for a funeral at midday, um, so I will try and stay for as long as I can. But there is a... a, a um, uh, a funeral I have to attend and I'll try and make you aware of when I actually leave the meeting for the records. Uh, in relation to the declarations of interest, um, I would like it registered that I have a, a who somebody I consider to be a good friend who does own a garage, who is a uh, an MOT provider. Um, it doesn't uh, directly affect my thoughts on this matter as I'll be speaking generally on, on the case rather than specifics. Thank you, Stephen Bledsoe. Um, item three, approve, approval of minutes um, to receive approval for the minutes of the 27th of the 9th, 22. Oh, no. Second. Thank you. You moved it, Max. Sorry. Um, item four is the Bridgen County Borough Council taxi testing regime. Um, sorry, who's going to come in on this? It's one of the licensing officers. I think it is it um even on oh. is presenting you, Yvonne. Hi Yvonne, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, members. It's Yvonne Witchell, the team manager for um licensing. Um the report that we have for you this morning is um to advise members of a request from the local taxi trade to review the current method of um, taxi testing. Well, within your report, we give you the background to um, the Council's role in the regulation of taxis and private hire vehicles. And the 
legislation that isn't currently in force and effectively that the primary role of the council is to ensure the safety of the public using taxis and private hire vehicles prior to the license being granted and throughout the duration of the license and fundamental to that process is the vehicle testing regime. Um, obviously, um, national legislation requires um, vehicles to hold a Ministry of Transport or MOT certificate um, through um, the course of the license period. But as passenger carrying vehicles, the current vehicle testing regime also involves elements which relate specifically to taxis and private hire vehicles. And these are based on the national inspection standards best practice um, and adopted by uh, a number of councils. And they are technical standards in relation to the testing um, of taxis and private hire vehicles. And those are attached to your report at Appendix A. Um, in addition, a copy of the taxi test element of the testing regime is attached at Appendix B, and that shows you all of the elements um, which make up um, the actual test that's conducted and those elements which are specific to taxis and private hire vehicles. There are a number of other complementary factors to um, licensing vehicles, and that includes the age policy um, at which licenses are granted um, and also the enforcement aspect and inspections and the onus on uh, a vehicle license holder to maintain the vehicle to an acceptable standard whilst um, operating um, the vehicle in question. And the cur council currently uses its powers under the Local Government Miscellaneous Provisions Act 1976 to require all vehicles to be presented to the Council's in-house MOT testing station, which is the T. Thomas Joint Vehicle Maintenance Facility in uh, Brackler Bridge End. And there is a contractual arrangement in place to facilitate this requirement, which comes to an end in 2024. Uh, within the rest of the report, we outline um, the frequency of testing, um, and uh, just a brief overview of the um, fees and the test booking um, process. So the council has received um, representations from the taxi trade um, and a petition of a approximately 170 signatories to open up taxi testing to other MOT garages. And the specific request um, in the petition is to allow for testing at any MOT testing station. Um, and the reasons cited are that the current system has been unworkable, is geographically disadvantageous to um, license holders, and um, there are unacceptable business disruptions in the case of MOT failures and retests. Um, as part of bringing this report um, to you, um, we've carried out some internet based research to determine how other local authorities in Wales conduct the taxing testing regime. Um, and these results are at um, Appendix C. And it, just to give an, a, an overview um, of how taxis are tested, um, which councils use um, in house facilities and which um, use. Uh, a, a different set of, of models to carry out the testing process. From a licensing perspective, it's crucial that whatever testing regime is in place, it ensures that both best practice national standards and the standard MOT tests are complied with. And having regard to the request, if members wish officers to explore alternative models of delivering the vehicle testing regime, um, and then a feasibility study will need to be undertaken with relevant stakeholders um, in order to report back to the committee with the options for them to consider. And this will also take into account the cu current contractual uh, arrangements. Um, and the feasibility study will draw from approaches taken by other licensing authorities and consider a number of models um, to present back to members. And these are listed at four point. Uh, seven of your report. Uh, the rest of the report um, relates to the equality and well-being uh, implications 
and there is a section on the financial implications where of course the um, consul study in consultation will encompass all fin financial implications of the options open to members. Uh, there are two recommendations at um, section nine of your report uh, for you to consider. Um, and that is the report that we have um, before you. Thank you, Yvonne. Um, would anyone like to um, to give their opinion? Um, Councillor Robert James. Uh, th thank you, Chair. I think Yvonne, owing to the concerns that have been raised, I think a feasible study is the way forward, all right? I think most of us people will agree to that, that are different variations of the councils, what they do. So I think a feasible study for us would be the, the, the way forward. And I'm rather surprised, Yvonne, at the National Standards Inspection, all right? I didn't know that um, Hackney Carriage and the private hire is a devolved issue for Northern Ireland, Scotland, but not for Wales. Just something that has come to mind notice. But as I said, I think a feasible study is the way forward, and I will I recommend that we, we do that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor James. Councillor Heidi Bennett. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I guess I've got a question, and it may not be something that can be answered, but if we are going to, I, I mean, first of all, I would um, second uh, Councillor Malcolm James's um, support of the officer's recommendations for a review. Um, but I wondered whether if we did go out to external MOT um, providers, um, whether they would then charge for the additional tests. Do we know if that happens in other areas? So it's not just the MOT test, it's the other um, elements that the tick sheets that were included in the appendices and whether they would charge for that additional work. Um, and also, you know, noting that the there could be a loss of income to the local authority as well if we go outside. Thank you, Councillor Bennett. Um, Councillor Pratt, I know you're waiting, but can I just bring Will Lane in on this, please? Yes, that's fine. Thanks, Chair. Just in response to that one question that was raised um, across the SRS, uh, we do have one authority that we serve, which is Cardiff, who have a model where you can have the MOT test and the additional taxi test undertaken in a private garage. Um, and there's a variation in the fees that those garages charge. So most will charge an additional fee, but um, I wouldn't be able to provide information on on the uh, trade as a whole, but certainly there is an additional test usually um, charged to taxis when they when they go through that process. Well, would you know at the moment is there um, is the test that's being done now more expensive than an MOT test, a normal MOT test? Sorry, Will, you muted. Right, sorry. Um, I wouldn't have the, the answer to that. I mean, I think because of the the various tests that may, fees that may be applied by garages, uh, it's difficult to provide a, one answer to that, I'm afraid, Chair. Thank you, Will. Councillor Pratt. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, just one question, really. Um, I, I wonder whether this is is well timed. I mean, the, we're sitting here in 2022. If we approve a feasibility report, it will be presented to us in 2023. Um, the contract, as I understand, with T. Thomas will expire in 2024. So would officers be mindful to um, give the feasibility report and then make changes after our contract as it expired with T Thomas or will we be looking to end that um, contract early if we approve um, the idea that taxi drivers can go out to external bodies for their MOTs? 
Uh, Councillor Cross, I can come back to you on that question. Uh, firstly, there'll have to be a feasibility study where they'll have to work up a number of options, obviously, because um, there'll be a lot of implications for each. When they're working up that feasibility study, then the contractual issues will be looked at at the same time. But in any event, um, after the feasibility study is done, it's still have to, gonna go, have to go out to public consultation for a period of 12 weeks. So this is not going to be a quick process, whichever way you look at it. Thank you, Andrea. Um, Councillor Stephen Blett, so. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, and I do also support Councillor James's uh, move of a uh, feasibility study. Um, I have read through the report and um, I don't want to have misread it in any way. Uh, but can I ask, um, there's obviously a difference of opinion across a number of different um, authorities in relation to how this process is undertaken. Um, the MOT certificate is granted by or you know, tested, sorry, by garages who are approved by the Ministry of Transport. Are there any concerns that we should be aware of uh, from this authority that if we open this up to every um, available MOT testing station, that that would have a detrimental effect to the service that we are statutory obligated to, to provide here? Or is that something that would come up in the feasibility study? Thank you, Councillor Bledsoe. Uh, Will Lane? I, I think, Councillor, that would be something that the feasible, feasibility study would have to look carefully at. Uh, as you pointed out, if you look at Appendix C, uh, different local authorities take uh, different views. Um, even within MOT testing stations, they are graded by uh, uh, votes as to uh, where they sit in, in, in their suitability. So that would be very much something that uh, would, would come out of the feasibility study in, in order for us to present members then with a, a rounded picture and give them all the options. Thank you, Will. Is there anybody else that'd like to say anything? Can I just add a supplementary to that, Chair? Is that possible? You certainly can. So, so on, on the basis of that answer from Will there, then, then on the basis of the feasibility study, then we could, in principle, propose a motion that the contract is awarded to those who are graded highest by VOSA, or you know, there could be some form of qualifying criteria on the standards that we could ask for, and it could almost be based on how good um, they are deemed to have uh, performed by a, an external body? Um, I think we're at two early stages of that because, of course, there's the contractual issue of awarding contracts, which is subject to um, legislation and the, the procurement process. So it wouldn't be for committee to, to make any decision around that at the moment. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you. Is there anybody else that'd like to say anything? No. Nope. Right, OK. Um, Yvonne, is there anything else you'd like to say on this? Uh, Chair, no. No, there isn't. Sorry. Um, We'll take a vote on whether members think we should move to a, fe a feasibility study. Mike, can you take um, a, a note of the vote, please? Uh, yes, I can do that. Um, are we going to do a roll call through each of the members in attendance? Yes, I think that would be the sensible way forward. Thank you. Uh, OK, we'll start with uh, Councillor Anthony Barrow. Uh, for it, uh, uh Councillor Heidi Bennett. For thank you, Councillor Lowen and Hopkins. For Sir Jonathan Pratt. For Councillor Maxine Lewis. For Councillor Mike Kern. For. Councillor Richard Collins. 
Four. Councillor Richard Williams. For the study. Councillor Malcolm James. Four. Councillor Stephen Bledsoe. Four. I believe that's everyone, Chair. Uh, it was unanimous. Um, Thank you, Mike. Ten, ten in favour, four. Thank you. Right, so that concludes that. Um, I don't think there's any other urgent items. Um, Yvonne? No, Chair, no urgent items. All right, so thank you very much. So we've decided that we're going to move to a feasibility study. Andrea? Yeah, no, that's fine, yeah. Thank you. Um, well, thank you, everyone. And that uh, concludes everything for today. Um, don't forget, um, there is another meeting on Thursday. Thank you, Chair. You played a blinder. <laughs> thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair.